Oh, shit. Oh, what time is it? <laughs> it's still early. You can rest more. No, no, it's fine. I got this. I'm just going to go spend some time in the shop so nobody comes to check in on us later today. Get some sleep. I'll be back soon. You sure? I'm sure. I'll wake you up when I'm back. Okay, cool. Uh, thanks, babe. I mean, uh, thanks. I knew what you meant. No need to rush, dear. What do you want? Am I not supposed to take an interest in my daughter's life? I thought you had outgrown that phase. I'm not your daughter. Morgan! You can be so cruel sometimes. You weren't always. When you were young, oh, you were the sweetest thing. You would never imagine the things you say to me so casually now. I'm going to work. Work can wait, dear. I'm sure your customers will understand. I have something to show you. I thought since you were so desperate to see in my office, I could give you a little glimpse of what I keep in there. If you are not interested, however, I'm sure your American friend would be eager to join me. Now come with me, dear. Ah, here we are. Tara. What was that, dear? Nothing. I ought to thank your friend. She's made motivating you so much easier. It's nice to see you caring about someone other than yourself for once. I'd almost think you were finally growing up, if you weren't so stubbornly holding on to your teenage rebelliousness. What is this? You were so peaceful, so calm. I can't remember another time when you were so relaxed. I hate to interrupt it. <laughs> really, I do. But I only have so much time to spend here. Do you understand? Hmm. 
This forest spirit. It's so young. As small as it is, the power within it is enough to melt the ice in this place, to draw you in. You love it so much, even though you'd only just met it moments ago. I always knew you were part of this forest. Much more than any of the others. This confirms that. I thought it would make you dangerous. It didn't. It made you weaker. Her one chance at success. Of escape. And you're weakened by it. Since you loved it so much, I wonder how it will feel for you to be the one to kill it. And where are you then, sweet old boy? And we are No, 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 no! <gasps> Thank you for being such a help, dear. Really. You're a monster! How funny. Your mother said the exact same thing. You really do take after her. Never forget this day, child. In the brief time you have left, I want you to know for certain that you don't stand a chance of changing your fate. You never have. None of you ever had. And when the time comes for you to serve as my vessel, <laughs> I'll make sure the next one won't either. You can find your own way home, I assume. I know how much you love these guys. Holy shit, you're okay. I thought, when you didn't come home, I... I'm okay. 
Don't worry. It wasn't anything. Let's go upstairs. You need some rest. Come on. Thank you, Tara. Hey, that's what I'm here for. We're the dream team, remember? Uh, come on, let's get up there. You just sit here for a minute and relax, okay? I'll go make some coffee or something. I thought you didn't even know how to make coffee. <laughs> That's where the or something comes in. I guess I'll take the risk. Thank you, Tara. Here we go. If the caffeine in this doesn't wake you up, then at least the taste will. As long as it doesn't kill me. No promises. So, uh, what happened out there? Did she hurt you? N not really. She just went on about how I can't do anything to her. It wasn't anything serious. Bullshit. I'm sorry, Tara. We've already got so much to worry about. I didn't want to give you more. I want to look out for you, Morgan. I can take it. And then I couldn't stop. I, I was killing it. It was burning and dying. It was like the entire forest felt it. I couldn't stop the magic no matter what I did. And after everything was said and done, Evelyn, she... She told me my real mother was just like me. Shit, Morgan, I... She probably doesn't know how much we know. If she's trying to scare you, that means she's really scared of us. Her pulling weird shit in the forest isn't going to change anything. The trees were... You're right. Sorry. I shouldn't have made such a big deal out of it. Hey, that's not what I meant. I want to hear what you have to say. You know I'm not the best at, like, saying stuff. Or knowing how to say stuff. Isn't that your job? <laughs> yeah, but do I ever look like I know what I'm doing? <laughs> You've got a point. But I'm okay, I promise. It was just some cheap scare tactic. I wouldn't let something like that beat me. Like you said, this is just a sign that we're on the right track. Just because everyone else before us failed, that doesn't mean that... Morgan. Huh? You're crying. What? No, I'm not.
It's okay. You can cry. I told you, I'm not... I'm not... I... I... Let it out. You know I've got you. It's cool. I don't think anyone on Earth or anywhere else would say you don't deserve a minute to get it all out there. If you say so. For what it's worth, I think you stand a way better chance than any of the people that came before you. After all, you've got one thing they don't. What's that? Me, obviously. My incredibly humble savior. Hey, if I can't stay on brand even under the threat of death, I don't deserve to be popular. I love that about you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Hey, uh, can I say something? As much as I love to joke, I'm 100% serious about you having something that they didn't have. More than one thing, actually. What are you talking about? I mean, you're really brave. Like, the bravest person I've ever met. You're smart, too. A hell of a lot smarter than I am. You're... You're all the things that I act like I am. You're smart, you're brave, you're strong, you're not afraid to fight back against bullshit, you're beautiful, you're capable. You've been through a ton of bad shit all your life and you're still fighting, even against things nobody else out there believes. I spend nearly every day of my life thinking about the strangest things in the world and I still couldn't have imagined someone like you really existing. You're just really awesome and fun to be around and being here with you is one of the best things that's ever happened to me and I don't want this to end and I'm... You're in love with me. I'm in love with you! Look, I'm really sorry. I know we agreed from the start that we wouldn't catch feelings. I swear I've never had this happen before. I get if you're upset, and I'm sorry for bringing this up now while we've still got this other shit going on. And when this is over, I can just leave, and I won't make a big deal about any of it, and we can just go back to living our own separate lives. you too, obviously. Yeah, I kind of figured. Huh. 
I guess they really do have you after all. I'm not going to let her hurt you. I promise. I know. We're gonna beat this thing, Morgan. We're gonna kick Evelyn's ass, and we're gonna save my best friend. And when we leave the shitty village behind for good, I want you to come with us. Yeah, of course. So, uh, what does this make us? What do you mean? Are we, like, dating, or...? I mean, it's been a while since I've done something like this, and uh, this isn't exactly a normal dating scenario. I don't know. Not that it's anything against you, of course. I love you a lot. I don't doubt that for a second. But I don't know if I can put a name on that love right now. Not with everything else we're dealing with. And here I always thought fighting an ancient evil monster would be the perfect setting for asking someone out. Maybe if everything turns out okay, we could give it a shot. Putting a name on it, I mean. Saving it for after we kick some ass, huh? I can dig it. So, what does that make us? For right now, I mean. Can we just be people who love each other? Stay friends the way we are right now, but in love. Yeah, yeah, I think I can do that. I do have one question, though. Shoot. Can we kiss more often now? <laughs> that works for me. Fairies! You? Have you returned? I'm sorry. I I'm not your queen. I'm just an ordinary human. A human? Ordinary? Don't think so. I promise, I'm just a regular person. You're mistaken if you think I'm your queen. A mistake? Have you seen her? We've been lurking. We haven't seen her. We haven't seen anything like her. How long has she been missing? It's hard to say. Did you know? Time is a human concept. I 
If we see her, I'll be sure to tell her you're looking. That won't be needed. She surely knows. That's why she's our queen! Do the three of you have names? We don't. We have no need. Names are for humans, too. We have to go now. It was nice to meet you. I hope you're able to find your queen soon. Don't go! What if you stayed? You could be our queen! You would do! We could make it so! It would be easy! Everyone is suitable. But you are. Let us show you what it'd be like. We can give you a taste. Would that be all right? Medicine. Come on, let's go. What if I know something useful, Abigail? We know lots of things! Secret things! Clever things! We can know you, too. You don't belong here! We can tell. But wouldn't you like to belong? What exactly do you mean? The forest doesn't reject you. But it doesn't accept you either. We could change that though. Whatever you're searching for, if you help us. Would you, you like, like that? that? Okay, just a taste. All I see is black. I'm alone. And yet, hundreds of presences flood my consciousness all at once. I can tell they're the fairies, but I don't know how I can tell. I'm bombarded by their awareness like tiny darts, not using words or thoughts or intentions, but just feeling. They're somehow distant, as if behind a wall, but so, so present. I try to find the semi-familiar presences of Hay, Frio, and Anon, but they're indistinguishable from the rest. There's no individuality, no sense of identity at all. They're just the fairies as a whole. But I can feel what they're feeling. Panic and anger and hurt all churn together. The feeling of being lost, of not knowing where to go or what to do, but not being able to sit still. Though I can't tie it to any particular memory or event, the feeling hits me so strongly, so undiluted that I think I might cry. I can feel that they've been scared by something, but I don't know what that something is. Then, at last, I feel a nudge within my mind, the sensation of being noticed. The presence takes me in, welcoming me. 
It occurs to me that I no longer exist. I try to ask what's going on, but I don't need to. The moment the question forms, the presence with me starts to answer. Images play in my head, ones I've never seen before. They're grainy like an old film. If I try to focus on a particular detail, the whole thing becomes muddy. I can see flames burning away at the forest. The fire is so real that I can almost feel its warmth. But when I start to focus on it, that too vanishes. The presence of the fairies weighs on my mind, an uninvited audience to the next part. I can see a fairy stumbling alone, but something's wrong with it. I realize instantly, I can't feel its presence. Where it should be, there's just a gaping hole, so vast and profound that it hurts by sheer exclusion. It's agonizing. I want to tear my heart out of my chest so I don't have to feel it anymore. The presence of the fairies, the whole nest tries to reach out after it and fill the hole, but it won't allow itself to be touched. The moonlight overhead, which I crave, falls onto the lone fairy who hastens to escape it. The lone fairy flees, and the rest of them, the rest of us mourn. One word pulses through my head, both a condemnation and reassurance. One word, though I don't know what it means. Moon sick, 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 moon sick. The vision twists, and I can see a woman. But she isn't a woman. She's also a fairy, but not just. I'm so happy and relieved to see her that I just know she's the fairy queen. I can feel how much she misses the lone fairy. I know, because I miss her too, desperately. I can see her searching, her hope never fading, until one day, she's gone. The loss is even greater this time. A sick mixture of guilt and shame plagues me, because I don't know where she is. I don't even know how long she's been missing. How could I have not noticed? The loneliness is so great that I want to do anything to erase it. Another silhouette flickers, just out of sight, but I can't keep track of it. We all have to watch it together, and then I realize... It's me. But just like the Fairy Queen I saw before, it's also not me. Visions of time pass, months. Years, centuries, and throughout all of them, all of the loneliness is gone. It all feels right. I could fix this. Madison, are you alright? I'm fine. <laughs> How long was I out? Out? I didn't think they'd even begun. What? We told you, didn't we? We aren't bound by time. Join us and you won't be either. Now that you've seen... And now that you've felt, will you join us? I'm sorry, but I can't. Thank you for showing me what it would be like, though. How can we persuade you? We need our queen soon. You could be our only hope. I know you do. <laughs> but I'm sorry. 
that just can't be me. We hope you'll change your mind. We'll be waiting for you. We'll be waiting for a queen. Madison, are you sure you're all right? Yeah, I'm sure. It was just a lot. Was that really that fast? Yes. They touched your face and then a moment later you gasped. That's insane. It felt like a long time. Like years had passed. Fairy magic is strange and beyond me. They're similar to the forest spirit, and yet... Different, but in a way you can't put into words. That's right. You certainly did see a lot, didn't you? Yeah, I guess so. Have you ever met their queen? Or seen what she looks like? Just once, long ago. She and the forest spirit are both guardians of the forest. Did you see her in your vision? I did, but I didn't get a clear look at her. I knew who she was, but I don't know if I'd recognize her if I passed her on the street. Do you think you could mistake me for her, like they did? Absolutely not. You're much prettier than she is. But to the fairies, I expect it's hard for them to tell the difference between humans. So maybe you looked like her to them. I wonder how long the queen's been gone. It seems like they've been coping just fine without her, until something happened to scare them. Something like what? I don't know. I think it had to do with fire, maybe? So much of what I saw felt real, but most of it wasn't. Fire... hmm... What's wrong? Did you remember something? No. It was just a thought. Maybe that's enough fresh air for today. We can head back to the church. All right. Mind if I join you? Please do. Headache still? I'm afraid so. Our encounter there sure didn't help. I'm sure. I'm sorry. Am I bothering you like this? Not at all. Madison! Here they come! This one's name is Alma. Hello, Alma. Hey. 
Is this the deer that was watching you sing the other day? Most likely. Alma's a little bit shy, and sometimes prefers to keep her space. You know this deer pretty well, huh? Of course. We're very good friends. Would you like to pet her? I'm certain she'd let you. Sure. <sighs> Guess not. Alma, come back! I promise Madison won't hurt you. She's just as sweet as you are. Must have been a while for her to trust you like this. Oh yes, I've known her for her whole life. And I've known her mother since she was small too. That's amazing. Any other animal friends that I'll get to meet? Oh, certainly, if you'd like. I'm sure Mr. Bearer is asleep for the season, but perhaps once he wakes up. There are also a pack of wolves around, but for Alma's sake, I would be best left to another time. None are quite so friendly as Alma and the rest of the deer, though. When I was a child, I wanted to have a deer for a pet. I thought that perhaps I could learn to ride one, like a horse. My sister and I would look for footprints in the snow and track them for as long as we could. We never got very far, of course. Hardly a few feet into the forest. But to children like us, it was quite an adventure. You must miss her a lot. In a sense. More than anything, I think I miss the days of wonder and awe, back when the forest and all of its creatures were still a mystery. Sometimes I wish it could be like that again. That it could be unknown. You wish that you hadn't met them? No, not at all. At least, not given the circumstances. I'm quite grateful for the companionship they've given me. For so many years, they've been one of the few sources of company that I've had. But while my love for them has never diminished, I've come to the conclusion that it's grown to the most it can grow as well. That's simply what the world had become for me. A small world of gnomes, and nothing more. And then I met you, Madison. You were my first unknown in countless years. The first soul I could speak with that I didn't yet understand. And what a wonderful unknown you turned out to be. I... Uh, um... <laughs> Thank you. That's really... Really sweet. I think you're wonderful, too. Do you really mean that, Madison? I... I really do. You're an incredible person. 
I can't imagine having to go through what you've been through without losing any sort of capacity for joy. But here you are, still so full of energy and positivity. I hope that... I hope that I can maintain that sort of optimism. an optimist. I don't, nor have I ever really had much hope. There are small comforts and delights, but those aren't the same thing as hope. I can remember names and faces, and even dreams and aspirations that I once had. But do you know what the most curious part of it is? It. I can't remember how it felt for those dreams to be within reach. Even with my meager, lonely existence, there was still a chance. As unlikely as it would have been, there was always the possibility that someday, something would change. Something might happen. There was a light, so to speak, to look forward to. And the day that I died... That light went out. I never gave thought to what this unlife might be keeping me from. Not from the life I left behind, but whatever it is I would have been met with had I lived to the end of my days. For a long time, I considered myself lucky that I was free from hurt and pain and worry and loss. Even if they were predictable and boring, my years here in the forest haven't been unpleasant. But I've never been optimistic. I've never had anything to look forward to. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine meeting someone as perfect as you. Never did I imagine that I would be happy again. But Madison, I don't deserve this happiness. Not at the cost of your own. I keep thinking how if I'd been a bit faster or more decisive, perhaps I could have saved you that day in the snow. And that even if not, I don't know what future I've stolen from you. I don't know what awaits those of us who pass on. All I know is this unlife and its permanence. In the way that you deserved better. ever blame yourself for any of this. I know I don't. Ever since we met, that day in the forest clearing, all you've done is made things better for me. I don't know if I ever told you this, but during those first days after we met, seeing you again was all that I would look forward to. I'd go to bed thinking about you and wake up the next morning thinking about you. And as for everything else... To be honest, I don't know how to feel about a lot of it. So much of it is just hard to process. I thought that it would get easier with time, but it hasn't. But there is one thing I know. One thing that I'm absolutely sure of.
Madison. May I kiss you? Yes. was even more wonderful than the many times I had imagined it. Uh, I hope it was worth the wait. I'd wait another 200 years if it was the only way I'd get to kiss you again. I promise. You won't have to. Madison. What is it, sweetheart? I know that I've said this before, and will probably say it many times in the future, but today and yesterday have been some of the happiest days of my life. Mine too. <laughs> and it's okay. I'll never get tired of hearing you say that. Are you feeling okay? Of course. Why wouldn't I be? I don't know. You just... looked a bit sad. Maybe it was my imagination. <sighs> you do know how to read me, don't you? I do. What's wrong? You can tell me anything, I promise. Only if you want to talk about it, of course. This day is so lovely. I don't want to say anything that could spoil it. You don't have to worry about that, Abigail. I love you, and that means I want to be here for you no matter what. We're going to have plenty of wonderful evenings. I promise. And being open with each other is the best way to make sure they stay wonderful. I was thinking about other happy days that I've had, how long it's been since then, and how the memories have since soured. How much have I told you about my sister? Not much. You mentioned that the two of you were close, and that you spent a lot of time in the woods together, but that's it. We weren't just close. Helena and I were inseparable. Whenever anything went wrong, she would always be there to protect me. She swore that that would never change. But fate had other plans for the two of us.
For as long as it's existed, Eisenfeld has had a... a curse, you could call it. A terrible monster who would destroy the village if given the chance. To appease its terrible rage, we would offer a sacrifice to it. Every generation, a new offering would be chosen. But it didn't just want flesh. The head priest would take the sacrifice into the forest to be offered to the horrible spirit. The sacrifice's soul and the head priest's body would both be consumed. Then, the new head priest would emerge, having taken the form of the poor sacrificed victim. It was the painful reminder of those we had lost. When I found out that it would be a member of my family who was to be taken and given over, I wasn't shocked. There was only one thing that I cared about. That it wouldn't be my beloved Helena who was harmed. I couldn't forget the joyous days of our childhood. I couldn't let such a kind soul suffer such a horrible fate. So, when the time came, I offered myself. I volunteered to die, so that Helena could live. And in that very moment, when our fates were sealed, I looked at them, at Helena. And do you know what I saw? Relief. Not once did she try to stop me or change my mind. Not that I would have let her, but I don't think she even thanked me. My parents cried, of course, but they didn't argue either. Neither of them stepped forward to take my place. No one did. While I'm sure my sacrifice was appreciated, I was quickly discarded without even a token effort or gesture of appreciation. My sister, who had sworn to always protect me, had no difficulty accepting the fact that I would die for her. What? She just... gave you away? Just like that? If death looms over you for long enough, it corrupts everything. Even love. It didn't corrupt you. Perhaps. Though I believe that that's why I'm still here today. What do you mean? The first step of the ritual involves separating the sacrifice's body from its soul. From what she told me, as she did it, those poor victims usually try to resist, begging for someone else to be taken. And when their souls are ripped away, they're too damaged to carry on. I didn't resist. I went peacefully. And so the gentle forest spirit, who I'd been raised to believe was some kind of demon, eventually came and took me away. And I've been here ever since. Thank you for listening. I've told the one person who matters, and now I think I can heal. I know, sweetheart. I love you more than anything. I love you too, more than anything. Good morning. Good morning, my love. Sleep okay? 
Well enough. I'm sure all of my nights will be better now that they're spent beside you. How about you? Pretty good. I woke up with, like, a bad feeling, though. A bad feeling? About what? I'm not sure. My head kind of hurts, so maybe that's it? Actually, now that I think about it, this is the first actual pain I've felt since turning. Oh, dear. I felt the same, actually. I had hoped that stepping outside might help, but it seems not. How long have you been out here? A while. Perhaps an hour or so. I was afraid I'd wake you. Nah, I slept right through. It's not just a coincidence that we both feel sick, is it? No, I doubt it is. It must be something to do with the forest. You felt bad the other day, too. When we first met the fairies? Was it the same thing then? Most likely. Changes in the air. Something's happening. And it isn't good. Is it... Evelyn? I think so. I don't know what she's done, or why. But this can't all be coincidence. What about the forest spirit? You said it's a guardian of the woods, right? Why doesn't it stop her? I'm sure it's doing what it can, but it's just as intimately connected to the forest as the fairies are. Far more than you or I. So as the forest itself weakens, so does it. Is there any way we can help? Not that I know of. Maybe we can think of something together. There has to be something we can do. Yes, perhaps. I feel like I can accomplish anything with you by my side. We've already beaten death. There's no way Evelyn can stop us. At least not a second time. Perhaps you'll make an optimist out of me yet, Medicine. Shall we go for a walk? Absolutely. Probably a little bit early to meet Alma, although they sometimes come by at this time. This grove is one of the easier places for the animals to come drink during winter, so it attracts all kinds of wildlife. Yeah, I've noticed all kinds of tracks in the snow leading around here.
Jason! What do we do? How does this even happen? Magic! These are not normal injuries. It's the forest. The forest is sicker than I thought. And all of its children are hurting for it too. Thank you. I'm glad you came. Abigail! Look! Oh no! Oh no, no! What's happening? Are, are you okay? Do you feel any different? Should we take you to the forest, Spirit? Or get you some rest? Or... Medicine! It's not me. What? It's you. <laughs> what do I do? Something's happening to the forest. This must all be connected somehow. It's simply impossible otherwise. What could Evelyn be doing? I have no idea. Nor do I know why she's choosing now of all times to do it. Do you... Do you think the forest sphere can help us? can try.
Do you know what's going on? Has something like this happened to you before? It hasn't. This is the first I've seen of it. But I think I know. I think that the forest is having trouble keeping you here. The magic is getting weaker, too. So does that mean that... No. I won't let anything bad happen to you. Not again. I promise, Madison. Okay. I trust you. Hey, why aren't we taking the shortcut through the forest? Is it too sick to let us do that? It's more that I'm afraid to try. If I push myself too hard, then... thought about that. It's okay. Take as much time as you need. It's been so long since I visited the spirit. Our brief moment in the grove with Alma was the first time in days. I wonder if it's missed me. Of course it has. Who wouldn't? You're far too sweet, Madison. back? Oh! I was so worried. <sighs> Me too. Hopefully it's permanent. Indeed. It's not too much farther to the spirit either. We should hurry. Don't push yourself too hard, sweetie. I won't. <laughs> Are you sure you're alright? I'm fine. It's just... <laughs> it's the forest again. Not me alone. Something terrible must have happened for it to be this way. Just now? Or at least today? Maybe. Or we may only now be feeling the effects. I'm not sure.
It's not your fault, though. Even if you knew, you couldn't have changed it. If anything, we were lucky. Have those few days. Let's keep going. The spirit must be around here, too. Why doesn't it stop, Evelyn? Isn't that its job as Guardian? It probably can't. I'm sure it wants to, but... It relies on the forest for strength. So if the forest is weak, then it must be too. In fact, that may be Evelyn's intention. Come on, I'm sure we're almost there. It can't be much further. I'm sure you're right. that tree too, right? I'm pretty sure you were the one who showed it to me the first time. We're almost home. Almost there, you've got this.
just need a little break. now. Are you okay, though? I'm just a little tired, is all. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Shh. It's okay. Where can we go for help? Maybe if the forest spirit sees how rough it is for us. Believe me, it would if it could. But I fear that it's even weaker than I am right now. It's much more in tune with the forest than me. So it's suffering the effects even more strongly. All of this because Evelyn killed one tree? It wasn't just any tree. It was one of the ancestral trees. The oldest one. They're the heart of the forest. All of its strength comes from them. So what do we do? There has to be some sort of solution, right? Can we plant another tree or, or something? forest spirit is supposed to become the next one. All of the ancestral trees were once spirits like the one you've met. What's stopping it? The mayor? That's right. I hadn't even realized. Realized what? <laughs> this spirit can't pass on on its own. It needs the help of the Fairy Queen. That's one of her duties to the forest. But there's no Fairy Queen right now. Yes, which means that there's no one to complete the ritual. Madison. I know. There aren't any other options, are there? None that I know of. Sorry, again, I'm... It's okay. You don't need to apologize. Really. But... It'll be okay somehow. I know it. I'll be with you, no matter what. I know. Thank you. Seriously. I couldn't do this without you. I love you. I love you too. Let's go visit the fairies. I'm sure they're still looking for a new queen. Hello? Hello? Fairies! Please, we need your help! Madison? Madison? 
If you can help us, I'll find you a queen. Even if it has to be me. Only if you can help us. Name your terms. But are you sure? We think we know. If you make us human again, and stop... whatever it is that's happening to us, then I'll make sure you have a queen. Whether it's me or someone else. A queen! Who else could it be? We've been so long looking. There's not much time left! For, for you, you or, or for us. us! Wait, what do you mean? What are you running out of time for? She'll make her move! Haven't you seen? The moonsick one. Mm. Moonsick one? You mean Evelyn? Evelyn? A human name. It must be her. How long do we have? Until the moon is at its brightest! That's when she's strongest! Will you be ready then? I'll have to be. Okay. We can start preparing! Are you ready? It won't take long. Yeah, I just need a moment to get ready too. Medicine, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I love you, Madison. I love you too. Is it time? We hope it is. Just put this on. That's it. All I have to do is put on the crown? That's all for you! Is that too much? We'll do the rest. Okay. Frio hands me the crown. I let it rest on my palms. It's light, barely noticeable. The flowers are all woven together so deftly that I have to wonder if it was made by magic. It's also slightly warm, like it had just been sitting in the sun for a while. I swallow the lump in my throat. This is what's best for everyone. Not just for me or Abigail, but for the whole forest. With one swift motion, I reach up and place the crown on my head. It fits perfectly, as if it was made for me. I wonder if it was. The moment it touches my hair, the fairies start to move. They chatter out loud, but there are so many of them speaking that it's impossible to hear what they're saying. I don't even know if they're human words. Altogether, they sound like a forest of rustling leaves. I shut my eyes as I feel a tingling sensation. It starts at the top of my head and slowly works its way through me. 
It's not uncomfortable at all, but it also wasn't anything ignorable. Something soft brushes against my face and hands. It feels like snow, but isn't cold. And when it melts away, there's no trace of wetness left behind. An invisible force feels like it's tugging me in every direction at once, but I stay rooted to the spot. A light scent of pine fills my nose. Somehow, it's nostalgic. I open my eyes, still in the middle of my metamorphosis. Warmth spreads through my body like a hot cup of coffee, and with it comes understanding of the forest and how I'm a part of it. I'm acutely aware of its existence, tuned to its precise frequency. I imagine this must be what Abigail meant by being connected. Memories that aren't mine start to run through my head. A movie that I can't shut off. Visions of trees sprouting from the earth and growing skyward, and of clouds forming and then falling apart. Each denizen of the forest, every tree, every deer, even the forest spirit itself, come to mind at once, feeling like old friends I haven't seen in a while. None of it feels new. It's not intrusive or foreign. Rather, this knowledge feels like something that's always been there, but without my awareness, or maybe something I'd forgotten. It's comfortable. And still the fairies dance overhead, their rustling chants even louder as they perform their ritual. I wonder if all fairy queens are inaugurated this way. And at the same moment I wonder, I know instinctively that they aren't. Visions of a beautiful woman whom I immediately recognize as the missing fairy queen come to mind. And with her comes a longing, a feeling of something missing. Then as my thoughts turn, the vision and the longing are gone too. I can feel the rustle of cloth against my skin as even my clothes acknowledge the changes, taking on a life and form of their own. They lengthen and stretch and puff out, becoming a dress more elaborate and beautiful than anything I've ever worn before. Living, breathing flowers bloom from its hem right before my eyes, matching the crown on my head. I feel the magic work its way through, over, and around me, enveloping tightly. And then, as the ceremony comes close to an end, I start to feel it drain out of me. It seeps down and out, and back into the earth and air, returning to the forest that lent me its strength and trust to take on this role. As I heave a deep breath, the enormity of the responsibility that's been placed on me feels heavy, but not unbearably so. If anything, I'm reassured by the competence and power that I... I'm not invincible. I know that much. But for the first time in ages, I feel like I'm in control. I stumble, just a little bit, as my feet touch the ground that I never knew I'd left. The instant that I do, the last of the shifting magic leaves me, although I can still feel it as part of the forest. Without anyone saying anything, without any confirmation, I simply know. It's done. I've become the Fairy Queen. <laughs>